Hey everyone, welcome to Homes for Beginners, where I show you how to do repairs around the house yourself. In this video, I'll be showing you how to do an imitation whitewash using paint. Traditional whitewash consists of powdered lime and water, which I won't be using here. For this, we are doing a pine tongue and groove ceiling. The boards are being painted before they are installed, which is the easiest way. This procedure can be applied to a variety of woods. The wood must be dry and untreated for this. All the wood was cut to length first. This wood isn't perfect unfortunately. We tried to hand pick the best pieces at the hardware store. Some knots were missing or there were some mild damage on the wood and that was filled using wood glue. We have been using No More Nails glue from LePage which seems to do a great job. Here I am giving a brief example using a cut off piece of wood. Fill the hole as needed then drag the razor knife over the surface for an even fill. Allow it to dry for 24 hours. Depending on the depth of filler, there may need to be another application. Being that this glue is white, it blends in very well with the white wash after it's been applied. If you do apply more glue, let it dry again. If not, then you can move on to sanding. A palm sander is used with 180 grit sandpaper to clean up any rough spots. Go with the grain, not against it, and only use light to medium pressure. As for the spots of the glue, you must make sure that glue residue has been removed completely from the surface and only left in the imperfection spots. If it's not removed properly, the glue will prevent the paint from soaking in the wood and you'll be left with a visible outline. The chamfered edges were also sanded. Only sand the surfaces which are visible once everything is installed. When done, the majority of the dust was cleaned off before taking the boards inside. It'll be cleaned again before painting. Right now I'm using compressed air and a broom. I've gone over each board a couple times to ensure most of the dust has been removed. Now indoors, next is on to painting. In order to paint indoors, we laid out a tarp to catch any paint drips or splatters. The boards were also cleaned again using a multi-purpose duster type cloth such as what is used around the house. A tack cloth is also another option. Make sure the wood is sufficiently cleaned otherwise you will have problems when applying the paint. For paint, this is a semi-gloss interior paint and primer mixture. This is from Benjamin Moore. The exact color name is Chantilly Lace. However, you can pick a shade of white based on your preference. It's a water-based paint and their slowest drying mix which gives us a little more work time during the application process. The paint is applied using a very soft brush so it doesn't show any brush marks. The paint is mixed at a 1 to 1 ratio, so that's equal parts water and paint. Mixing ratios can vary depending on what type of finish you're looking to achieve. More paint will mean less grain will be showing through. More water will mean more grain. Here's a couple test samples using spruce, which is a 2 by 4. The other is cedar, and that is on the 1 by 6. On this side you can see the 1 to 1 ratio, and you can also see the original wood finish as well. The other side has a 2 to 1 mixture, meaning there's 2 parts water and 1 part paint. Don't mix the paint by eye. If you need more mixed, you won't be able to achieve the same finish. Make sure the paint is mixed before the application. Apply the paint. I don't apply too much to the brush, so it doesn't excessively soak into the wood where it may affect the finish. The 1 to 1 mixture I still find shows the grain quite well, and it seems to tone down those knots. At times I do go against the grain on the ends to prevent splattering or drips. However, finished strokes of the brush must be with the grain. I'm trying to keep a fairly dry application. When more paint is applied, you'll see the transition on the next application. Therefore, you'll need to fade each application. Any knots or imperfections had extra paint applied to allow it to soak in for a moment so any cracks will remain invisible. The paint is only applied to the visible side of the boards. Depending how long you've been using the paint on one application, you may need to mix it from time to time. On to the other boards, again using the exact same process. First is cleaning the boards again to remove any dust. Work from one side to another and don't stop your application midway through a board. Otherwise you will notice a transition if the paint dries. This finish cannot be achieved using a roller or spray as you're not able to control a thin dry application. While some people do wipe off the excess paint, it's not needed here. I did find while the paint was still wet, it does have a more solid color appearance. After it dries, the grain does tend to show up more and you'll see that further on in the video. When done, then allow the boards to dry overnight. 
Only one coat is needed. More coats will hide the finish on the wood, giving it a more solid color instead of a whitewash look. The boards were left for 12 hours to dry just to be safe. This may vary between paints. This will most likely be dry in just a few hours. Here you can see what they look like before the installation. They do have a smooth finish with no gloss. There is no need for clear coat, however it can be applied if you wish. The tongue groove gets installed on the ceiling using a brad nailer. All nails were applied in the tongue portion so everything is hidden and there's no need for any touch-ups. I won't be covering the installation as that'll be saved for another video so be sure to stay tuned for that. Once done here you can see the final finish. There is still quite a bit of work to be done here. We still need to install the drywall, the beam will be capped and the gable end windows will be removed then filled in. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a like and drop a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more home DIY videos. Thank you for watching.